All right, I am Lauren Berggren. Welcome to room two. We're going to get started with the corral and start line session with Chris McDonald. Thanks, Lauren. So today we're going to talk about the corral platform and um, it's a great way to organize your race for socially distance um, and use start corrals for starting waves. So we're going to use corrals and waves interchangeably um, and you can actually change the name of the word um, corral within our system. So going right in, why do we need corrals? Well, as races are returning, there's going to be limitations, whether it's size limitations or space limitations. Um, and so uh, having waves or time trial starts are a great, great way to manage the number of people that are on site at any given time. Um, and this controls congestions and, and supports social distancing. Um, a lot of times when you're going in uh, to permit events and you have a set number of people that can be in a set place at a given time, um, you can kind of circumvent those numbers, whether it be 50 or 100, if your start and end places are in different uh, spots and you're only starting, say, 50 people at a time every 20 minutes, because then you never have a large group of people. You can also expand race dates and use the corrals um, to help sort out who's going to be racing when. Um, they can also be used for virtual events um, that use set course, path, course paths. Um, and so this is just a normal bib from a normal race. And you can see there's, uh, there's things like um, barcode and what wave these people are in. So like we said, it could be used for a race um, that has multiple courses because you could set it up so that on um, the, the waves don't have to be wave one or, uh, or corral one. They could be actually, you know, this course versus that course if you're splitting up your race like in ge uh, geographically instead of by time. So why use our corral management? Number one, if you're a timer, it syncs with the entire race day suite for, uh, for timing. Um, and scoring, but also for you race directors out there, it also syncs with race day check-in. Um, and this can be set to automatically assign by estimated finish time with a question when an athlete registers, which is awesome because that means you don't have to go back in um, and manually assign these later. Now, don't get me wrong, you still can import um, the corrals via CSV as needed. Um, and there's also a reporting function that you can monitor the number of athletes in each corral as they're registering. So where do you go to set up corrals? Well, you're going to go into race day tools, corrals, and then you're going to click set up corrals. This pops up this screen which is corral setup. And you've got a bunch of different options. We're gonna go through each one individually. So on the left, you have your corral builder. This is how you actually set up your corrals. Then you have assignment options. This is where you can set if you're going to be collecting finish times or how you're gonna be assigning those people into the corrals. You have a reporting function, which is a great way to do a spot check of how many people are in each corral or if you have a corral that is full. And then you have additional settings down below that are the corral settings for participants. This is um, similar to think about participant data management. If you're doing things like uh, allowing participants to transfer to other events with cutoff dates, or um, maybe they can change their t-shirt size up until a certain date. This allows them to change their corral up until a certain date. Um, and then you have corral settings for bib assignment. So you can auto assign bibs off of what corral the person's assigned to. And then you can also, uh, the display corrals on participant list and results is where you, uh, you would go to share that, what displays outwardly to the participants. So we're gonna start with the corral builder. So before we even get into it, the very top of the corral builder, you have a, um, a little white box at the top. It doesn't have a green um, box around it, but it says use our estimation tools to help with corral size and finish times. So these time builder and size estimator are great if you already have data in the system and um, people are already assigned to corrals. So um, if you already have things set up, you can use those tools to figure out um, how many people will be out there. So secondarily, um, once you start creating corrals, you have a bunch of different options. You have a corral name or number, corral start time, 
the corral description, the max number of people, and then you have the applicable events or details underneath. So for this example, I've named the corral number one, one, a corral start time of eight o'clock, start description is 8 a.m. start, and a max number of people of 25. And I said, you know what, we're gonna make this for the test 5K. No one can enter this corral in under 14 minutes for male or female. And the max time for this corral is 30 minutes of their estimated finish time. And for this example, only 25, so this is a one-to-one -one ratio, 25 max of people in this corral. Um, and all of them are gonna be in the test 5K. So also, this is just a different variant of the same race. Um, and what you can do here is we're, we set corral two and we set corral two as corral two hyphen blue bib or blue swim cap or, you know, dog runners. Um, and so the, the purpose there, and I'll show you in a second, um, is this information shows up um, on the check-in app. And so we have the corral start time, which is slightly different. Corral description is 9 a.m. start and a max number of people at 25. So in this scenario, we set the people in both test 5K and test 10K could be in this corral. So they would both be in corral number two, which we called blue bid. And they have different times, but um, they're somewhat similar. But as you can see, the max number of participants for the entire corral is 25, but the max number of participants from the 5K is 10 and the 10K is 20. So the first 25 people of this grouping are gonna be who, who um, fill up this corral. So again, the benefits of the corral name, this allows for volunteers to confirm the corral. Now for the test 5K, maybe it's no big deal. They're in corral one. Maybe they get a special sticker or something like that on their bib or they get a special bib color. Um, but for triathlons, you can use this to clearly define what color cap should be dis distributed. So again, we just uh, set this to, uh, it's still the same race, test 5K, but I changed the corral name to corral two and blue cap. Um, with the, uh, the check-in app, you can also show a bunch of different other things, but um, I found that it really helps volunteers not to have to look on a secondary sheet of paper that says if they're 45 or 50 years old, then they get uh, you know, this bib color or this swim cap color. Um, if you can integrate that in and show it on the check-in app. So now we're gonna move on to the assignment options. So assignment options, you have the ability to ask an estimated finish time question. So if you hover over this, it'll give you um, a description of what we're talking about. But once you click on, it brings up this type of information. So you have minimum allowed finish time, maximum allowed finish time. And then for male and female separately, there's a require verification for finish times quicker than and then inclusive. So what that means, and I have an example right after it, is that if somebody tries to register and they put their time down, their estimated finish time down faster than 30 minutes and zero seconds, they're going to have to, um, they're gonna have to verify it. And so above that, it's going to have verification, time verification info added. So this is, you could say, please provide your URL um, to, to verify your results. Um, and then you can put information on the, under that that helps them understand what you're looking for. And so what do those settings do? If we look at this, this is part of the registration right here. And you can see these on the top right, you can see the settings that we put into uh, the event. So if Fred Flintstone, when registering, he puts his shirt as medium and he puts his time, his estimated finish time is 30 minutes and one second, nothing populates underneath. As you can see, the required verification is 30 minutes and zero seconds. However, if he puts in 29 minutes and zero seconds, and you can also click the compute from pace and it'll give you, uh, it'll compute out what pace you would finish the event in. But if it's under that 30 minutes, an information uh, box pops up that says time verification info added. That is the information right there that we put in. And a box populates that allows them to type in a URL or something like that within that um, 
within the box. So then you also have the ability to put information at the bottom. So you can say help text you can add in here and just below help text you can add in here. So again, very easy to add in the information and um, have them answer a question based on a faster than usual time. This could be used for your elite waves um, or any special division that causes people to be a little bit faster. So the final, uh, final part across the top is the corral reports. So once you have people in, you can go into the corral reports and you get a breakdown of the corral name that you have. And so in this event, we have corral one, two, blue bib and dog runners. And so it also breaks down the number of participants in each event that are in that corral and the total number of participants in each corral. So it's a great snap, uh, snapshot of how many people you have in each corral. And you can also say, look, corral one's only supposed to be the 5K. So you can go through and look, okay, good. We don't have anybody else outside of the 5K in this corral one. So now across the bottom, we're gonna go into the corral settings for participants. So again, like we talked about earlier, this is very, very similar to your data man participant data management fields that you have for a number of other parts of run signup. So with these settings, you can say, are you gonna allow for your estimated finish time updates? Let's say someone has been training, they, uh, they register a year in advance and you know four months out, they realize they're much faster. So you can allow these updates, you can put a cutoff date and a cutoff time. You wanna do that um, in advance, especially if you have caps uh, or, or participant caps for those waves because it's going to allow you to um, know in advance how many people you're putting in those waves. And if you're buying like special bibs for each wave, um, that way you're not over purchasing or under purchasing for that matter. And then in regards to corral updates, this is only applicable and it says this right below, it's only applicable if corral selection is enabled during registration. So this one is more, the first one is more of a, a time, um, it allows for people to change their times. If you're not asking time questions and allowing people to just to select um, what corral they wanna be a part of, then this would be the setting that you would change there. Um, on top of that, you can break this down by event. And so let's say you have corrals for the 5K, but you only have 10 people signed up for the 10K. So you don't need to worry about corrals. Um, so that would be the situation where you could do this by event. Um, and it's really easy, similar settings um, populate underneath. So now settings for bib assignment. So the corral settings for bib assignment, when you click on that, it brings you to a very, very familiar page and that is bib and chip numbers. So for any of you that are timers out there, you've likely seen this side. A lot of you race directors might have as well. So um, when you, the, the only field that um, populates uh, the corral side is the assigned bib numbers at time of registration. And when you click this and turn on auto bib assignment, what it does is if you didn't have corrals on, it would stop right here at this green line. But since we do have corrals on, you have a breakdown where you can set a start and end range, two separate ranges for each corral setting. And what that does is it allows you to order your bibs in advance and say, look, my bib one through 100 are going to be red and it's gonna be corral number one. My bib number 101 through 200 are going to be corral two, which I guess I should have said blue, which would be a blue bib. Um, and then the dog runners might have something special on their bibs. Um, so you can order in advance and, um, and delineate the, the bib numbers by uh, wave or corral that they're in. So finally, on this page, we have display corrals on participant list and results. This is a page that we get a lot of questions on. Um, why aren't the appropriate things showing up on my you know, results, my participant list, um, things like that. Um, if, you, if you search for participant display settings um, and things are missing, like say on your results, it might be because some of these have been turned off. So if you want your corrals to be able to be displayed, 
you do need to turn these on. Um, and if you turn it on to the public, then it's going to auto turn on for your participants and your corporate team and captains. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is the same place where you can go to turn off other things. Um, like if you don't want age and gender to display, you can turn that off. Um, so again, this is, uh, this is the same field. It's not a special page. It's under the uh, participant display settings. And this only is for outwardly sharing you as the race director will still be able to see everything on the back end. So where on run signup can I manually sign corrals? So under race day tools, corrals, and assign corrals. So this would be used if you're not planning on um, doing any kind of auto assignment. So what you can do here is you have two different options. You can set a group and assign those by registration date or, um, and have a default corral that it goes to. And you can also override your corrals or reassign people that have already selected corrals. So you would just click on the ones you want, assign it and set which default corral they're going into. Secondarily, you can go in and you can assign corrals via CSV. Now, I will say that for triathlons, this might be the, um, the preferred method um, as you can, you can set this up and um, you can download all the participants, you will need to re-import the, the information back in with their reg ID and the corral name. So that's how it maps the athlete to the appropriate corral. And just keep in mind, if you change those corral names, you'll need to make sure those corral names match um, exactly. Otherwise, um, it's not going to map appropriately. So with that being said, Great, we didn't go over. And are there any questions that we need to discuss? Um, there's a, a few different questions, um, more around uh, feature requests. Um, <laughs> trying to see if there's anything here that would be good to bring up. Oh, a few just pieces of discussion around the um, the start time field and how it works. Um, people asking like, how can I add more description um, so people can see information about the uh, corral both, like both right away. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the suggestions I had was to add more text to the actual corral start time itself because that's not a time field, it's a string. So you can add whatever you want in there for flavor text. Um, yeah, I've seen people say five minutes after the previous wave. Yeah, and putting, yeah, so it, it's, it can be completely variable. Exactly. So that's one of the things that I like to recommend to people that a lot of folks don't understand that that can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to be a start time. Um, let's see. Another person suggests, you know, that triathlons, um, they use corrals for different cap colors. So, you know, you can do yellow and green for the different uh, waves instead of one or two. Mm -hmm. And again, it's very, I, for the triathlon side, I think it's very, very helpful um, to, e even if you're manually assigning um, within your scoring platform or something like that, to import that information back in because the check-in app um, is a super powerful tool and having that kind of information within the check-in app for the volunteer, it just removes a lot of the, the need for them to look at a secondary sheet or something like that when they're checking in athletes on site. Another good one was, um, Stacy was asking, is there a way to um, limit corrals based on the fastest 25 people instead of the first 25 people? And I said, uh, no, it's not possible. Um, that's technically true in terms of an automatic assignment method, but you could manually assign them and just sort your spreadsheet based on their estimated finish time and yep. do it after the fact. So a little bit inaccurate on my side. Yeah, and if you're doing that and you have a cutoff time, you know, two or three weeks prior to the race, it's not very hard to, um, you, you can go in and, and update those uh, corrals for those fastest people and call it like your, your elite wave or your pro wave or what have you. Yeah, here's one, uh, Steve, our friend Steve Teresa just asked, he has some events set up to ask for an estimated finish time during registration, just in case. Where does that data live and how could I use it if we do not, if we do need to manage start times? 
Um, so I guess I would ask Steve, um, do you have this set up as a corral or do you have it set up as a custom question for non sign up? He has that as a corral. So okay. yeah, Chris, do you want to go off of that one? Yeah, if, if it's already in, you can go back and run that report off of the um, the the estimator. That's um, and you can actually use the estimator in the beginning if you already have that information in to figure out what corral size is going to work best for you. Another Great. one. Sorry. Oh, we're at time. Sorry, oh, we're yeah, at time. we are. At <laughs> we have to stay on time. We're only we're the first one today. So. Yes. But um, Matt, do you want to reach out to um, Matthew? Yeah, I will. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much, Chris and Matt. Um, we're going to have a short 10 minute break. Um, so at 1.30, we are going to have digital bibs and finisher certificates with Sean. And this will be in the same link. So if you want to attend um, that session and topic, just stay put. You can turn off your webcam, put yourself on mute go take a break and come back. If not, um, depending on your topics and your priorities, you can find the daily session links and topics by going to the symposium page, which I'm going to put in the chat right now. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to see all the topics and the um, different room links. Either see you soon or see you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.